Hey guys, I hope everybody's having a fantastic day. Whether you're watching this in the morning, in the afternoon, or in the evening, I am glad you're here. If you're so inclined and you have just a second, please look down there and hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. And please hit the bell notification. let YouTube know that you're here. It'll also let you know when I release extra videos. I usually do 6 a.m. every morning, but I do release special videos. I release one tonight on my fixed blade dive, and then I do um, live streams from time to time. So it's just a great way to engage with the channel, and I really appreciate it. It helps me out. So today, what I wanted to do is I wanted to give my full thoughts, my full overview, my long-term um, basic observations of the Cold Steel AD-15. The Cold Steel 8015, guys, I will tell you back when I first got into the knife game again, this is a knife that always kind of intrigued me, but at the same time as I've watched videos, it would also kind of intimidate me. I didn't really know what to think about it, and I will be honest that it had a little bit of a learning curve to figure out what Andrew Demko was going for and how to really utilize what I feel like is the fidgetability and the very uniqueness of this knife and why it's one of my favorite overbuilt knives. A lot of people are not big fans of the 8015, but I, with a Scorpion lock, I love it. This came after the Triad lock, which was Andrew's lock that he put on the 8010. Um, the Scorpion lock, I'm not going to say it improves on that lock. It's just a totally different lock. It is, um, it is beefy. The knife is full to medium size. So when I put this knife in my hands, it fits just perfectly in the grip. It is a big knife. I've got a choil that I can choke up on to get more detail cuts, to get better control of that blade. And then to disengage this lock, you pull back on the scorpion bar here where you can see the hole in the blade and you give it a little flip forward. So basically you've got this action that when you flip it, it's pushing that scorpion lock out. And as the rotating blade and the stop pin come into contact with that stop there, that scorpion lock drops into the cutout in the tang and also encompasses that stop pin. So what that gives you is that gives you a knife with extremely strong lockup. The harder I grip the knife, the harder it's gonna, the spring is very stiff that's anchored back here that engages that scorpion lock, but it's also very fidgety. So if I was gonna utilize this lock and fidget with it, it takes a little getting used to, but you just simply, I can remember when Kevin did his video, he was like, why would I, I want to cut my fingers off trying to open that right there. And guys, I've never had my fingers become anywhere close to that blade. But again, I'm not sticking them all the way through. I'm just popping the lock out and letting it close. Now this one is a little bit harder to reverse flick. You can do it. See how I just did it there and it was a little bit slow. It's where you lift the tension off. You've got to be very, or not, that's not the word I'm looking for. You've got to be very deliberate in where you place your hand for the reverse flick. So it will flick in a reverse flick. I find this knife much easier and much more pleasurable to actuate just with the thumb studs. It fires out, locks up great. Um, it is what I consider one of the cooler Demco design locks. Um, this preceded the shark lock and again came after the triad lock. But the way I look at it, and you know, I look at it from a Greenpeace eye, somebody who hasn't been deeply entrenched in the community, hasn't been, you know, aware of with what everybody's been doing before I got back into it after COVID. But I can tell you that um, Andrew Demko's locking system seemed to be state-of-the-art. They seem to be something that's, you know, that's truly revolutionary in the game. And that was close. And I just think the understated elegance and the effectiveness of the way these knives work is just something to behold. From the improvement on the back lock with the uh, triad lock to the scorpion lock 
two when Demco went out and did the AD 20.5, which we'll do a size comparison with the Shark Lock. I'm just a big fan. I'm a big fan in these overbuilt cold steel knives. This one is in the same materials as the AD10, which, or the AD15 is in uh, S35VN. It is in G10. Um, it has a G10 compression spine, because this spine, again, pulls apart from the knife to release it. And I just noticed that Original Goat Scales now makes a titanium scale for this particular knife. I've got the Pops Deep Carry Clip on here, or this might be somebody else's Deep Carry Clip. It's definitely not stock. Um, but I'm thinking about possibly, because I do like this knife so much, I think it might be cool to have that titanium scale, and then you still have that offset G10. But um, yeah, it's just a great knife, guys. Let's take a quick look at it with some size comparisons, and I'll get my uh, Ben Peterson NAVCO ruler out, so we'll have it on standby. But let's first look at it next to its bigger brother, and that is the Cold Steel 4 Max that uses Andrew Demko's triad lock, the back lock. And let's compare it to the Civivi Baby Banter. Again, it's going to be much bigger than the Baby Banter. Kind of within that overbuiltness of the Cold Steel 4 Max, but again, much, much smaller than the 4 Max. And I am guessing that it's going to be greatly larger than our bug out. And probably about a quarter inch longer than our Spyderco Paramilitary 2. So let's do a couple of more, two more size comparisons. We'll throw the Sharpie in there because it's over here. Sharpie on the handle, a little more or a little less than a Sharpie on the blade. Let's look at this next to the Demco AD20.5, which I have a feeling is going to be a good bit smaller. I think the AD20 is going to be closer to its size. And let's break out our AD10 again, which if I'm not mistaken, is going to be larger. Nope, right around the same size. So the AD15 lengthwise is going to come in and be right around the same size as that AD, um, the AD10. So the AD10 again uses Andrew Demko's patented triad lock. And then um, our 20.5 uses probably my favorite Demko lock, which is a shark lock. God knows I've got four of these knives. Um, I don't need four of these knives, but I love them. Um, now let's take some dimensions of this just so we can know what we're talking about. The blade is three and three quarter inches right under three and three quarters. And the handle is going to be right under five inches. What's that? Four, if I go over three quarters. Guys, I don't read the tape well, but y'all can see that. That's between four and three quarters and five. So very, very ample, ample build. And let's look at what our blade stock is. I think we looked at this the other day and it comes in at 0.15 just like the uh, Cold Steel 8010, 0.15. And then our handle thickness comes in at 0.57 at the thickest point. And just a really nice specimen, guys. I think it's very fidgety. Because once you get this to where you can get it worked in and you get your rhythm right, I'm not going to say it's anything like a bally song because it's not, but the way that you separate that, um, that scorpion lock and get your timing right, you can actually get it to flip really effectively. You can thumb flick it just by pushing it out there, easily close it. I'm horizontal, so it's a little trickier. Or if you hold it up around where that pivot is, you get a pretty good chance to reverse flick it, but it's more of a rollout because again, as the knife opens, 
it's overcoming, you'll notice it's moving that weighted scorpion lock as it deploys. So I find a little bit more success by just taking my thumb and really wrenching it out there. But that is the Cold Steel 8015 Noose Flash. It is my favorite cold steel knife. Um, I value it as my favorite cold steel knife because of the locking mechanism. Um, the blade geometry and the blade works just as well as my cold steel 4 Max or my 8010, which may be a little bit more fidgety because it drops a little more. But I just love the way that this knife is put together. I love the engineering of this Scorpion lock. Um, I stood and looked at this thing for weeks when I got it. It was just kind of a marvel of something that I hadn't seen in knife construction. And I just found it really, really cool. So guys, that's the Cold Steel 8015. I appreciate you coming by and watching a video that I put on the channel. That's an overview, review, long-term review, however you want to look at it. Um, what I didn't do yet, and I probably should do, is rip a piece of magazine paper out of PP Digest. And I do not know because I've not stopped this knife, but I'm assuming, because cold steels unfortunately come from the factory very sharp, and this one's no different. That's cutter error. But yeah, guys, it cuts, and it would cut thicker material even better. Um, it's definitely not thin behind the edge, and it wouldn't have what I would consider a slicing geometry, more of a chopping geometry feather sticking geometry, but it gets the job done. And that knife, I've not sharpened, I've not modified the edge, um, don't even think I've stropped it, but you know, it might be, uh, it might benefit from a stropping. Guys, again, thank you so much, all the support you give the channel. If you're new here or if you're coming by and you like the videos and you haven't yet subscribed, it's totally free. It really helped me out, I appreciate it. And if you hit that bell notification, icon it'll notify you when things change or happen here on the channel and guys like i always ask please look out for the guy or girl to your left please look out for the guy or girl to your right look out for each other move forward with love in your heart know that things are going to try your patience and that's okay choose debate before hate i love you all peace